Why do you build me up? Buttercup, baby, just to let me down. Oh, my God! Push me around and then worst of all. Oh. He needs some milk. You never call baby when you say you will. But I love you still. I need you more than anyone, darling. You know that I have no star. So build me up, build me up. But a cup don't break my heart. <laughs> All right, man, you're you're really killing it right now. Really, seriously, killing it in a good way? No, not in a good way. <laughs> can you can you get out? Can, can you please go? Can you leave now, please, please? Oh. Okay then. Uh... Trying to make a video here. Thank you. Golly. Hi, my name's Rich, and today I like to share with you guys my thoughts and opinions on this little game here called Come Together by Chili Fox Games. It's a game that plays between one to six players, and the playtime is between 60 to 90 minutes, and it has a Spicy rating, it looks like on the side of three chili peppers. Don't know what that means, but it seems pretty cool. Um, come together. When I first uh, saw this game, I saw this game when I was at Essen, and I heard a few things about it in the community, but not too much. I mean, I saw some videos also on YouTube from some awesome content creators, but I wasn't quite sure about like, what was this game about, right? This game wasn't, while well, I was at Essen, wasn't talked about too much. It was main focus was on other games like Starship Captains and um, some other titles there. So when I kind of walked by the, uh, the booth and I saw uh, this game, I was kind of like really, you know, really surprised by the, the theme of it. Um, I think the box itself, and it has the box and the cover on itself has a strong, uh, has a strong presence. So when you see it, you're kind of like, hmm, what is this? And so that's when I was like, okay, I kind of looked more into the game and uh, I kind of took a little, a small gamble, I guess you can say. Um, the theme is what really sold me on this one. And I was like, you know what? I like music. I, I, I like the, the art here. Um, I'll go ahead and pick it up. And I have to tell you, I am super, super glad I did. Um, this game is uh, quite a surprise. Um, it is a uh, worker placement game. Um, and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty, pretty, pretty cool. So before I, you know, dive too much into the gameplay and all those things, uh, you know, what, what is Come Together about? What, what is this game about, Come Together? What, what, what are we doing here? Let's go ahead and uh, jump into it. Let's see. I'll go ahead and talk about what it's all about. So what is Come Together about? Well, it is the 1960s. Everything is about love, peace, and rock and roll. That's right. And it's during this time where people all came together to go to these amazing music festivals. You know the ones I'm talking about, like Woodstock and that. <laughs> well, the great thing about this game is you're playing as a music festival organizer, and it is your job to make sure that you have the stage set the campgrounds all good to go and you have the uh, performers ready to hit the stage in the limelight and it's your job to make the best music festival ever that is pretty much what come together is about now you're going to be making the best festival by uh, getting uh, different people to attract and come to the crowd you have to make sure that advertisement is great. So you're trying to get good publicity on the news, radio and television. And you have to make sure that, you know, the uh, music goers there all have everything that they need. So 
you're setting this bad boy up with all your hippie workers and flower power children and all that cool stuff. <laughs> well, since I, you know, go ahead and talk about the theme, let's go ahead and look at it at the table and see how the game plays. All right, see you there. Hi guys, Rich here. And I just wanna say thank you for joining me at the table right now. Uh, what we have here is a two player game of Come Together. And as you can see, things are kind of all over the place. This is kind of like a middle of the game, what's happening right now. This isn't a um, how to set up or anything like that. I'm just gonna go over the general mechanisms of the game so you guys can get a kind of warm and fuzzy feeling about how the game works. And um, yeah, so let's just jump into it. So here we have our different player areas. Um, I will go ahead and just take it from the top here. Uh, we have our staging area, uh, the staging area here. And this is where you would place a worker here to select a stage for your festival. We have the campgrounds. Uh, these are selected here. And you will place a worker down there to go ahead and select the campgrounds. And if you see here, just for example, that one, <laughs> you can see some tents here. These tents show you how many meeples can actually go here. So uh, just for instance, in this case, only two campers would be able to stay there because there's only two tents. Um, there's also some other actions on here, um, but we'll go into that a little more in depth later on. All right, and um, right over here, we have our stars area, our main attractions. Um, you would place a worker there to select one of the cards and have a, maybe an up and comer, somebody's never heard of this person, or maybe you'll have a superstar come out on stage. And you can see here, this is a, <laughs> These guys look like they're ready to rock out. It's pretty cool. We've got all kind of different ones here. And if you see here on the side, on the anatomy of the card, it tells you what festival goers need to be at that festival. And it tells you how many points you would score for that card. If there's no point number, it means there's just one point. Then over here, we have our meeples or our festival goers. You would place a worker there to select one of these cards. And once you select a card, it's two out of three. You don't get all of the festival gores, but you're able to select the two that you want. And then from there, um, place them in their camps. So we have our staging, our campgrounds, our superstar area, and we have our festival gores. And here you can see this is kind of like the main board here. You have your player track that goes around. You have your awesome, uh, your awesome hippies here. They go into the, the hippie bus. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit on that. You guys can probably see it a little bit better. There we go. You have your cool, awesome hippie bus. And then also too, you have your um, activation track. I'll go into that a little bit more in the video here. And then you have your, um, your daily uh, publicity tracks that you are trying to meet, especially for your newspaper tracks. Uh, that's the main one that you're trying to meet here. For each round, there's one, two, three, because there are three rounds, and at the end of the third round, the game ends. So that's just a little bit of the anatomy of the board here. All right, then if we go ahead and look down here, we have our player boards. Each player will have their own come together festival. It will look something like this. And on here, you have your different tracks that you're trying to go up. You have your uh, radio track. So the further you are on these tracks here, um, different actions will kick off. You'll be able to get different goodies. And if you look here at the very top, this is how many points you'll score, score uh, per act. So for instance, I have an up and comer right now. It's only worth one point. But let's say I had my radio track all the way up to four. When he would play on stage, he would get four points. Um, you have your television track, which is the same thing for the superstars. You would get them the amount of points. For instance, right now, if let's say I don't have it upgraded at all, I would just get those four points. 
but let's say later on I get it all the way up to five, then I would score the five, uh, the four points on the card, and then I would score the five points because that's how much, how much publicity I have on my television track. And then you have your newspaper track, which this usually has to deal with the end of the round goals here that I mentioned earlier. Um, if you, for some reason, ignore this track, which is not good, <laughs> then bad things will happen because the press will just spread bad news about this terrible festival that you're throwing. They're like, hey, don't go there, no good. So you wanna make sure that you uh, move up on this track so at least you have a way of maybe not losing any points or even gaining points. Then from there, we can see here that we have our, um, our staging area. This is where the stages will go. And then we have our campground area. This is where the campgrounds will go. Um, to make give you guys a better visualization of this, I'll actually zoom in on here so you guys can get a better feel. So here are these different tracks. You have your other uh, your television, your radio, your newspaper track that I mentioned before, but then you also have your camping, your campground track. And when you're moving up on this track, you're able to get different goodies. And depending on where you're sitting on here, you're able to expand your camping grounds so it kind of makes sense after the festival has kicked off it'll show you how many uh, festival goers can be there how many campground tents you have um, the further it is the more you can have if you don't meet the requirement then unfortunately you have to you know not all the festival goers are there to see one act <laughs> you know maybe they're there to see a different act and they say okay well that was a cool show thanks i'm going home for the day or you have to you know the campgrounds get all messed up because you got a bunch of people there you know uh, at the festival and then they they go home and they leave <laughs> so you got to fix up the campgrounds all right so that is the overall anatomy of the board and the different uh spots there the player boards as well um, now I'm just going to go over quickly about the different actions you can take. So there's a few actions you can take here. It says A, B, and C. The first action is very simple in any worker placement game. You can go ahead and take your worker and place them on the board. When you place the worker on the board, you're not going to get the card that's up ahead. That will only happen during the activation phase or the end of the round phase. But depending on you know where you go, for instance, this one needs two workers. I would put two workers there and then I would immediately get this newspaper action or this rock and roll uh, festival goer or things like that. So easy, all right? You're gonna take your meeple, place an action or take an action. Then after that, you have your um, activation token, which is pretty cool. It's these big old uh, big boys here, these meeples here. And this is how you actually um, get the cards here that are above where the meeples are. Let's say, for instance, I'm the blue worker here and I want to try to go ahead and get all of my goodies that are up there. Then I would go ahead and take my activation token, place it here, immediately get that action, which is a uh, flower. I'll go over that, over that, what that is in a second here. And then I would get all the goodies. So then I would go ahead and take my card. Whoever else has their worker there, they would take their cards. And then depending on how many workers are there, we would get this nice little action. This here says, depending on the amount of workers that were there, there was two, I believe. Then you're able to move up one of these spots or two of these spots. You can split it up if you want to. This is for the campgrounds and then this is for the newspaper. Then you would also these flower tokens, as I didn't mention, but now I am now, you can spend one of these to move up one of the tracks. Once the activation uh, stage, as you can see here, has been completed, everybody will go ahead and get their cards. These cards will be removed, so they'll go away. You'll set up new cards. And then all of your um, <laughs> all of your workers that were there before, they go to their hippie bus because heck, they're tired, right? Because they were just setting up all this stuff for the for the stars and everything. So they need to go rest in their hippie van. And then you have the uh, third action here, which is 
um, you can take back all your workers from their hippie bus. So you, when you do that, you can take them all, you'll go and take your workers and then you'll place them onto your player board here. Good to go. You can also, this isn't mandatory, this is a, you, you don't have to, but you may, if you decide to, take one of your workers here, Let's see these workers here, uh, you can get an extra worker. So this says here, you can get an extra worker and bring them back to your camp. You could either choose to leave one worker there to take an immediate action, or you can draw three cards from one of the different sites here and place them in your planning area. Now cards in your planning area can only be used when you get the action on the track here with the notepad. Um, once you decide, once you've actually get, got a card, you can either choose to put that card on stage or you could choose to put it in your planning area, which is nice. But these are the actions that you'll take. Um, then uh, once this activation token, depending on the amount of players, has reached the very last one for that, the player count, the end of the round phase will happen. Um, everybody will get their cards that they have workers at. They don't get to take the special action underneath, but they get the cards. And then from there, um, you'll check where you are on the newspaper, and then you'll go ahead and you'll start the, uh, the festival. So. Hopefully you've planned correctly and you've got everybody on the stage. If you do, then you go ahead and get the, the workers that you have at your campsite here. And depending on how big the stage is, see I've got a few different things here. See I've got the stage here set up here. Then I'm able to place the, you know, the workers there on the stage. This one actually needs four. And in order to have four on here, the way you can tell is for each ticket, because each person coming into a festival needs to have a ticket. There's only three here, but while you're playing, you'll get these awesome little ticket tokens. And you'll place them here. You also get extra points for having different stands together at the end of the game. And let's say, for instance, the stand was incorrect. It looked something like this. Then I can flip over that ticket token here, place it on my board, and then it'd be good to go. Um, that's pretty much it. That's like a really quick, I don't want to take up too much time going over everything, but that's pretty much the overall uh, mechanisms and how the game plays. Once also the round ends too, you will remove these little um, tracks on here, and then you'll get new ones, as you can see here, that you will place on your board. So these will go away, you'll get new ones, you reset, you do it again, rinse, repeat. And yeah, that's pretty much the overall game mechanisms for Come Together. Um, the uh, solo mode, you'll have this AI deck. You also use this AI deck in two players, but it's pretty easy to use. All you do is flip over a card, take the action. Um, for instance, for the worker here, I flipped over A. Just pretend like this is the AI. Um, they would go to the A spot on the board, and then from there I would flip it over again, and it's like, oh great. So then you go to the A spot on here. Um, if so, there's a worker already there. Sorry, you go here, so onto the A spot. If there's already a worker there, then you just move one furthest to the right. So that's how the AI deck works. It's very nice, very quick, very simple, uh, very easy to use. So that's one thing I really, really like, really, really like. Um, but okay, yeah, uh, let's go ahead and just take it to the top and I'll tell you guys my thoughts and what I think about Come Together. Many of you that are still watching, you guys can already guess. I absolutely love this game. I love the artwork. I love the theme, I love the components and I love the game mechanisms. This game, really has it all. And this game is a big, big surprise for Rich. Um, definitely probably on my list of top games this year. Um, definitely my top game of Essen. I was extremely, extremely impressed by it. And 
I like the fact that I came into this game not knowing what to expect. Um, and I think those are the best experiences because once you, you know, you hear so much about a game, like with a lot of hype, right? You get these expectations of it's gonna be amazing, but then when you play it and it falls a little flat, it's a little bit disappointing. So the fact that I came in here with not knowing what, to, what was gonna happen, it's very, very nice and very surprising to, to have that great uh, gaming experience. Um, things that I love about this game, um, obviously I've already mentioned it a few times, the artwork, uh, the theme comes to life. It has a nice strong table presence so when you see it you're like, whoa, what's going on here? All the way from your cool little uh, groovy uh, camp goers who are super excited for the festival, um, you know, to your flower power tokens that help you progress on tracks, um, to your big old chunky activation token here it's you know just to get the round going and then your hippie workers so the components the theme and the artwork excellent um, another thing that i really love about this are the game mechanisms everything makes sense on this little track here right you have your camps down here you have your um your shows going on over here and then you have your different tracks right and it makes sense because you're trying to build up that publicity for your concert. So you have your radio, you're trying to get heard on the radio, you're trying to get some commercials on your TV, and then you have the newspaper track. I like the fact that this track, once you're you you know you're moving through it each round, it resets because it makes sense. It thematically makes sense because on a newspaper, you're reading the newspaper for that day, you toss it out, you get a new one the next day. It just, it's so cool, the little, little tiny things like that that make sense when you're playing it, it's awesome. I also like the fact too that you, there's different kind of venues on the back here, so it's like this here's uh, Peace in the Park, and the fact that this is on here, it makes the game more modular, right? So everybody can have their own different festival that they're setting up. Each one has a different difficulty on it. Um, to counterbalance that, they give each player unique uh, power to, to use. Awesome. Awesome stuff. The rule book. The rule book is great. I read the rules and I was very, very happy with them. I was very, very, everything's very easy to understand. They've got some great pictures in here. My only minor complaint is that the text is a little bit small, but <laughs> it's really something I'm just trying to reach for something there, but it's really cool. Um, also too, I like the fact that um, on the back, there is an appendix that has all of the different iconography on here. Um, it's Cause when you first see everything, you see all these different symbols and stuff. You're like, whoa, this might be a little bit, a little bit much. But after playing once or twice, it's very, very easy, very quick to pick up. If you've ever played games like Fort, then you're definitely gonna be able to play this a-okay. But it's nice to have here on the side. So in case I do get confused, I can always flip it over and look at it. Thank you, Chili Fox Games. Love it. <laughs> um, I love the gameplay, the, the game mechanisms of having to place your worker down and you know, you're really trying to plan ahead, right? You get that first initial little action, but the card that you need isn't gonna quite happen yet until either the end of the round or until somebody sets that activation token, progressing the, progressing the round to end. And I think that's really cool. There's some times where I'm playing and I'm like, oh man, I really need that card right there. And I'm like, okay, you know, I place my worker down kind of waiting for them. And I'm like thinking to myself, oh no, I still need that. Wait a minute, I'm gonna get it. It's just not here yet. So once you get kind of used to that, you're, it's, it's nice. Um, the solo mode, terrific. Rich likes the solo mode in this one. Um, it's very, uh, not like crazy, it's nothing unique or anything like that. They didn't reinvent the wheel, but all it is is it's a, it's a nice, simple player uh, AI deck. You flip over the card, you take the AI worker, you place him down, he takes the action. Um, the cool thing about it is that it really does feel like you're going up against an opponent. There's some times where I didn't want the round to end or I didn't want uh, one of the sections on the board to kick off, but then the AI's like, sorry, Rich, I don't think so, bloop. And then all of a sudden everything kicks off and I'm like, oh, wow. It's just like if I was playing with somebody sitting next to me, which I think that's really cool. 
It is a beat your high score. I know people don't like that in solo mode. I think the difference between uh, this one and most though is that it's very challenging. And I mean, the score to beat, it's tough. I haven't reached it yet. <laughs> so that tells you something. I've played this a lot and I still haven't uh, won a single game in solo, but I still have enjoyed it. Um, one of my favorite things to do with Come Together, once I have everything all set on the table, is I just put on a playlist, right? And I put on a nice 1960s playlist. I'm listening to the Supremes, or I'm listening to uh, Aretha Franklin, you know, a little bit of RS, RSS, RS. Wow. I put on a little bit of, you know, 1960s music, and then I'm listening to a little bit of, you know, Rolling Stone or the Beatles or the Supremes, and it's just really, really, really cool. I enjoy it tremendously. And um, that just, you know, even makes the game that much better. So if you find this game, I would say definitely pick it up. Uh, hopefully there's some more copies going to be on sale soon. I haven't heard anything too much about it, but if you do find this one, pick it up. If you're looking for a game for that, uh, that board gamer in your life, if they don't have one about music festivals, definitely pick this one up. <laughs> I think this is great. This could be played with the whole family um, and it could be played with, you know, also that board gamer that has, uh, you know, more into complex games because it does have that kind of, com a little bit of that complexity as well. Um, so yeah, come together. I, I absolutely love it. <laughs> First off, I just want to say thank you for making it to this part of the video. Thank you for taking your time today to you know hear my thoughts and uh, you know my review on come together i really truly appreciate it i also want to say thank you to all of the new subscribers Woo! out there heck i'm happy anybody's subscribing so i really appreciate you guys um if you like what you see uh make sure to hit that like button and uh also to make sure to hit that subscribe button and I'll continue to make uh, some videos like these as well so you guys can enjoy and, and hear my thoughts about uh, games that are you know, out and things like that. Um, also too, I wanna say this uh, little message here. It's not my job to tell you what to think, but it's my job to think about what you tell me. So if you have any kind of thoughts or wanna know more about the game or anything like that, please leave those comments down below. I love engaging with the community. I think it's extremely important. So anything you guys leave in the comments, I try my best to reply back to all of them. Um, but yeah, these are my thoughts on uh, Come Together. And I just wanna say thanks again, guys. Talk to you on the next one. Bye.